Hello and welcome to this episode of the Combinations Podcast. This week we're going to be handing it over to our very own Jane Beasley, who's going to be running the QI Insider, where they delve into topics, and this week's topic is to improve patients' access to repeat prescriptions. And Jane has a guest on there to talk about that, so we hope that you enjoy the QI Insider on the Combinations Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to this month's episode of QI Insider. Uh, I'm glad you can join me. I don't know where you are today, whether you're walking along with this, I'm in your ears through your earbuds or whether you're in the car driving, but welcome and I hope you enjoy the session today. So luckily today we have the very fantastic Rachel Bullock with us from North Staff's Combined NHS Trust. She is a nurse consultant in the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service, shortened to CAMS as we know it. She's new into post. Uh, she came into post in March 2022. Prior to that, she was an advanced clinical practitioner for North Stokes Community Directorate and a nurse prescriber at South Stoke CAMS. And she qualified in 2004 and has spent most of her career in a variety of roles which brings a wealth of um, knowledge and insight in criminal justice, uh, drug and alcohol um, misuse services and so um, she first came into the healthcare in 2001 as she was working as a healthcare support worker and got a secondment to train. And so how lucky are we that those sort of systems existed then and similar exist today? She is uh, continually uh, progressing her career and she's currently studying for an MSc in advanced clinical practice. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to uh, invite you into this conversation and hop on a conversation with Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Hi, Jane. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for joining joining me today. And um, we started this conversation off a few weeks ago, didn't we, uh, with uh, Bridget Hamlet, actually, who we are so excited and keen to hear about um, the QI project that you've been involved with, um, focusing on prescription management. So, um, if you could, if you wouldn't mind just uh, describing for the listeners the aim of this project and uh, uh, what you were focusing on, uh, that would be great. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Um, yeah, so, so we've, yeah, within CAMS, obviously, we offer a range of treatments, you know, both pharmacologically and non-pharmacologically. Um, and as it stands, you know, a big part of of what we do across our psychiatry and I suppose our advanced clinical practice nursing colleagues um, is is we manage treatment um, and and that involves managing prescriptions. So we have a huge cohort um, of prescription management. Um, Quite often our medications are controlled drugs. Um, So that limits us in terms of how we move those prescriptions around but also um, how limited a supply we can offer at any one point. So, so quite often they are 30 day prescriptions. So we, we, this was something that we needed to look at, you know, when we think about how they are requested, how are their ongoing, um, how they're issued, I suppose, regularly, um, and, and how families can access that as, as easy as possible. Um, as it stood prior to this piece of work that we've been doing, this project we've been doing, families were ringing up kind of every 30 days saying, I need a prescription for my child um, or young person. Um, that was then take a message was taken by our admin staff who would then have to pass on another message to a prescriber who then had to review that and then and then contact the family back and and arrange for delivery of that prescription to a particular pharmacy. So 
in terms of the amount of people that were involved in that and the amount of messages that had to go from one to another and then the transportation of that obviously it, it starts becoming quite big in terms of time and resources needed um, and, and we I suppose what made us look at it myself and Bridget was are there opportunities within that process to make that a bit more streamlined or are there people involved in that process that actually we could remove um, completely so um, that's where we started to think actually is there value in our admin staff taking that time on the phone and taking those messages when actually they were getting nothing in return from that piece of work apart from being a third party pass on so so that 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 started us to think you know how how would we be best to look at that um and, and i suppose that's where the project then uh, was born <laughs> yeah i can i can hear um a few sort of qi intrigues from me about safety patient safety and about reliable design and about removing non-value added steps so those steps that are in the process that add no value um, from the service user's perspective mm -hmm. and are not essential either mm -hmm. so it's it sounds like you were uh, really got some good insights <laughs> and so um what 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 happened next what did you do to move this forward then so you spotted all of these and um mm -hmm. what what did you do so uh, yeah so so the first step really was i think for me i really wanted to understand from our admin staff what their their day looked like you know in terms of um auditing how much volume of calls was prescription related um to get a sense of of actually how much of their time is taken up with passing messages on essentially and i suppose to understand from families what it feels like to order those prescriptions on a regular basis and what came out of those two things was was one we had high volume or large parts of a, administrators day taking regular phone calls for prescriptions bearing in mind that if a family rings and says i've completely run out or i've only got a day left that then created some anxiety for that Admin, admin staff to then act in an urgent way when actually it wasn't their piece of work to be acting urgently with. Um, so, so that was something that was really interesting and you know we, we started to see you know quite a number of hours when it starts to accumulate across a week that, that were taken up with dealing with that. Equal to that um, families were saying that quite often because our phone lines are so busy they had to try multiple times to get through on the phone to request a prescription. So again, families were using a, a large amount of time in doing this um, to, to, to get this message to, to our administrators. Um, and then when you think about having to do that every 30 days, you know, that starts becoming um, quite difficult um, or it feels hard work to, to get that request in. Large, um, volume, large volume of activity going on there and sounds like you did a a, a deeper dive and yes. went and had a proper go look see or go look learn and yeah. went to investigate and take a measure of, of what was actually happening it's interesting yeah. what you see isn't it when you go <laughs> and have a look yeah yeah and, and actually some of the the, uh, I suppose some of the frustrations, uh, how they play out, you know, if somebody's been trying on the phone and finally get through and that they're, you know, maybe towards the end of running out of a prescription, quite often you get that frustration down the phone um, and, and that was being felt as well. So so that was that was something that I felt we needed to look at really, um, you know, in terms of volume. And equally, when you think a bit wider than just prescriptions, you know, if, if the phone lines are being taken up with routine requests every 30 days, you know, what does that feel like for a family that who are maybe in crisis or who are maybe wanting to speak to our, our clinicians um, in terms of risk or in terms of needing some clinical advice? Um, so, so that was another reason why we had to look at, you know, is there a way to free up these phone lines a little bit easier? um through some of this work yeah so that that anxiety that's created the person 
answering the phone <laughs> and the person trying to get through it's a whole whole conundrum really of anxiety and for people answering the phone as well it can't you know when they're doing these type of tasks that seem like they don't add any value um then can't deliver great joy at work can it mm -hmm. <laughs> can't no. feel particularly that you're you're helping you are helping but it can't feel like it's a particularly nice job to do mm -hmm. okay so what happened then next what, what did you do what, what 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 did you put in place so I, I suppose the next step was we started to explore in in what other ways or what other options did we have open to us that that could ensure that families can get information from you know from the family to the prescribing clinician in the easiest most accessible way but in the mo also the most secure way obviously we're dealing with confidential information so how do we ensure um timely access um that it's it's helpful when when that information needs to get to us so it can be much more um spread across a family's week so if if they think about it you know late at night or at the weekend or oh, i need a prescription is there a way that we can get that that information to us at any point um how is that received so so how is it best received and who by um and and have we got strong governance around that um so we're, we're not losing any of our safety com information governance um and, and that we're we're maintaining the standards that we always set yeah so that that led us on to to looking at um the option that we've 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 gone for really which is that secure team level secured mailbox for each of our teams mm -hmm. so what, what what how is that working now so you just describe what current currently happens so someone can now email in uh, rather than have to call in and what what's the process that happens now how is it better yeah so so essentially now we've we've got a, and we have done a really strong engagement piece of work across all of our prescribing clinicians so medical and nursing our, our administration teams our quality nurses and our team leaders operationally to ensure that we're all kind of moving through this at the same pace and we're all invested in that working so that that's been a really helpful process i think um, to really feel a sense of doing doing that together um the impact has been you know obviously we've got a, a mailbox for each of our teams um and our all of our prescribing clinicians have access to to that um our administrators also have access to it purely for information so if a family do ring up saying i've requested a prescription this many days ago, you know, the, the the administrators have access to the information. They can actually see what's coming in, um, but but they're not responsible for acting on it now. It, it is down to prescribing clinicians to manage that um, mailbox and respond in a timely way to families to say, you know, that that's been processed. And actually, we anticipated teething problems. We anticipated families. Um, you know finding that transition from one to another difficult at times we also anticipated that change can be difficult um so some resistance maybe as well i think it's just sensible to anticipate that not everybody is going to go with with such a big change and we did communicate a number of times to all of our families to say this is going to be the process moving forward from this date this is this is what we would need to be able to do it so we did do a lot of preparation i think in keeping families up to date with what was the ask but also the rationale of why we were moving and the rationale was really strongly to say we want to make it easier for you as families to access treatment ongoing for your children and young people to our surprise we've we've actually had really good uptake um and our families have gone with it um and actually the information that we're getting through onto the secure mailboxes is much more comprehensive than what we were getting on the phone um so so we we have all the, the details what medication in particular they're needing how many days left they've got 
what pharmacy they collect from, what the number is to call them back, um, which was much more than we were actually getting when somebody phoned in. Um, so I think it's actually improved our um, information being passed from one to another. Uh, the families, the feedback of that they've quite liked that they get an automated reply as well. Um, so they've got that that assurance that the, the information has got to us in a timely way um, and they know that it's arrived so so they can kind of, you know, they can relax thinking I've, I've put that request in. I know it's got there. I'll wait for that response now. So so that's been um, quite helpful, I think. That's great. Great that. When, when we're connecting with any and any healthcare system as users, we we want to know that the message has been received and we want to know what's, you know, roughly, we want to have a bit what's going to happen next. Yeah. And we need a way to be able to easily get back in and ask another question. And, um, and we have had that a couple of times. So families yeah. will email in with a prescription and then they'll email with an you know, they may have forgot to put a bit of information, which means they can ping another email or they'll email in with a question saying, can I change my pharmacy? And we've been able to respond, you know, to that. Um, so, so yeah, that would have been another sitting on the phone, I think. Yes, yes. And, and you've got a trail now in which other people, administrators and clinicians can go in there and see who's interacted with this with this this family and, and what is needed next that's yeah. amazing the other thing we, we do once we do process the prescription is it, i mean historically we've always scanned our prescriptions on to lorenzo but what we do now is we also scan on the email that we've received from parents so we've got a real rather than it being a verbal request we've got written information that is time and date stamped of when with the requesters come in what's been requested and then when that was actioned so we've got a real kind of track of each step in the process uh, which wasn't always that clear with verbal it's more reliable isn't it now by design and i guess did you feel before that there were delays there could potentially be a, dr a delay um, as it was before so in terms of time and the time from request to receipt, uh, you know, of the of the of the medicines. Do you think there's time saved here? I, 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 without a doubt, I think there's time saved. I mean, there, there were delays at times, you know, and there were times where a verbal message did didn't get taken down properly, or um, maybe didn't get passed on to a prescriber. So there were issues where prescriptions weren't done in a timely way um, and that that's just being transparent and um, opening where we were at the time um, that's a lot more difficult now I think with the the amount of oversight we've got in terms of the shared mailbox um, it's it's interesting as prescribers you know we it, if one is sitting there for a day we're normally getting between us, one of us will send it to everybody else, say there's a prescription waiting, you know, <laughs> it's almost like it's uh, we, we need to get it cleared out of the mailbox as, as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been it, it would be much more difficult to miss, I think. Um, yes. In terms yeah. of time saved, you know, our follow up or, you know, because we plan to evaluate and one of our steps in, in evaluating it is going to be redoing that audit in terms of time on the phones for admin um, and really understanding what the impact has been you know has it lessened their call volume is it nice for them to not have to constantly take prescription requests has it changed the way that they see their day you know um, does it free them up to do another task that it feels actually more meaningful for for that job role and um, they'll be the kind of things that, that I'm interested in in what the impact has been and it's it's I think removing them from the process hasn't taken anything away because actually they they were just they were a third party in a in a kind of a clunky old way of doing things it, it was a step that was in there that didn't add any value um, and didn't feel and it was a process step and didn't feel like you're adding something to this this person's uh experience of our services and the way we deliver them 
Yeah. Um, I think I was also interested um, about your engagement of your team and and that you said that you've done that because that's the key quality from a quality improvement perspective you've just mentioned one key element which is we need to measure something to demonstrate the changes and improvement but also it's half science and half art and relational so the piece that you did with your with your teams and engaging them um how did you find that yeah i i knew i always knew that that was a key probably the most important step is is actually you know involving everybody getting that that sense of um buy-in from from everybody across the team um to the importance of moving from something that we've done for years and years to something that that is we're putting trust in in a new system uh, why now you know working through well why do we need to change now as opposed to next year you know what is it about um moving through this in a timely way at this moment in time um <clears throat> so all of those things and, and actually feeling like everybody plays their part in that and has that voice um you know to contribute to that change um yes. you know when we, I was always really clear on the impact or removing some of the impacts to admin staff around prescriptions that that was equally coupled with I'm asking prescribers to take on more oversight of what's coming in so um it, it's it's a challenge when you're you're having to um improve one person's working day but maybe adding another task into somebody else's so um it's, it's working through that that actually we're doing it for the greater good so the team as a whole can function much better um and that we all play our part in that at whatever level don't we we're, we're all part of a team wanting to make it as smooth as possible yeah so that you create in a sense of shared purpose about what we're trying to accomplish here and being open and transparent from the start and listening to people's concerns about what is the impact for them what is the impact for the service user what is the impact for other members and getting all of that out right at the beginning um, because all of it is is valid to hear and quite often as a, a leader of an improvement some of those concerns are great that they've been raised because it's the things that you need to keep your eye on <laughs> you know mm -hmm. to what extent if we change this to what extent does it increase the workload of pres prescribers mm -hmm. um, to what extent does it um, change the workload of someone uh, working on the front desk answering the phones so i think that that engagement right from the beginning is great and i just wondered whether you noticed that spending all that time up front having all of those conversations did it when you implemented the change did it did it make that easier because you'd done all of that I, I certainly think it it did with prescribing staff and I, I think being able to work through so when people were saying you know this is another thing I have to check you know I have to have another mailbox open and actually when we worked through that and said you know let's look at the process now so let's map what we do now as opposed to what we're asking or what we're moving towards what we found is actually the information was coming to prescribers in in one way or another anyway so we were getting an email or we were getting a task on lorenzo from admin staff and actually how is that any different than having an email come through from a family um so so doing that work i think started to then break down actually we're not asking any more it's just a change in the way that we're receiving that information um so Fantastic. it was worth doing doing that i think um yeah, yeah enabled you to dig a little bit deeper into what was current what was the current state yeah and what is that extra workload because no one wants extra of anything do they Let's no <laughs> no absolutely not and it's really important to to work through that isn't it but actually because it's something we've always done we probably don't factor that in that that's a task that we're doing um yes and, and, but this one is in the spotlight so it feels like an, another task but actually it they're just two 
of the same, aren't they? They're, they're just coming from a different source, essentially. And a more coordinated, uh, reliable source, one might suggest. Brilliant. So are there any next steps? Are there any new things on there? Any any bills? Because when you do something like this, quite often you see something else and you go, hmm, actually. <laughs> so what's this kind of next thing? Is there anything that you'll be looking at next? So I think there's a, uh, certainly we're still in the, the process of of bedding that in and making sure that that's as robust as it, it can be. And, and you know, um, we're still on the, you know, we're still on the lookout for teething problems or, or anything that, that might not be running as smoothly. We have got a, a meeting booked in to review the initial impact. Um, and that's that'll be where we explore kind of the impacts of phone lines, um, you know, reaching out to families to, to maybe learn how that feels as opposed to ringing in. Um, and I was talking to Bridgette this morning, actually, around something around i think because we get emails now in their time and date stamped whether we could do a an audit of the time of the week and the, the actual hour that the emails coming in and whether we're seeing a change in in how people are, are getting that information to us historically it was always nine to five that they had to ring monday to friday but actually what i've noticed by seeing some of the emails is i had one yesterday i was looking at and it was 10 o'clock on a saturday night and it came through so what I'm thinking is I'm really keen to know at what time are families sending those emails in? Um, because if we're seeing large amounts being sent at night time or weekends, actually that's hugely increased access to to being able to request when whenever suitable. Yeah, that shows that they are that they'll be able to do that when it occurs to them rather than having to wait so that's an I know and I can yeah. relate to that I'm a mum so <laughs> yes I know that when my kids go to bed you know it might be that you sit down at 10 o'clock and think right I need to do that because that's yeah. the quiet time of the day you know yeah and all um, those and that's great if we can yeah we can facilitate that yes yes and and that makes it better for them it'd be interesting to capture their thoughts on that won't it at, 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 at that point as well that's that's great Wow, what a, what an amazing project and a great piece of work. And it's given you lots of insights into the entire team, um, service user perspective and saving time, removing waste. There's all of the elements in, in there that you would expect to see in a great QI project and, and more to come, like you say, in terms of evaluation and collecting data. Um, to demonstrate the changes and improvement. Um, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that with everybody who's listening uh, today or later listening to the recording, <laughs> <laughs> which is more likely. <laughs> um, I, you know, you're a key leader within our organisation and a great inspiration to nurses across our trust and far and beyond. So as a leader, what is there a key piece of advice that you would give nurses that are earlier in their career? What, what would you say to them? They're listening today. Uh, and what would you say to them? What piece of advice would you give them? I think I think looking back when I was, you know, newly qualified or a little bit unsure, um, you know, you're fairly new into the profession I think you come in um accepting the status quo you come in accepting that you know we're we're big organizations and we seem to run like machines don't we and um you come in thinking oh, this has been like this for years and and I I can't possibly question this because it's it's how it it is and what I would probably say is have the conviction to question practice don't always accept the status quo if something doesn't feel right um we should be in a culture that can take being questioned um and that be healthy you know if if it's something that we need to do and it's something that has to stay as it is then there'll be really clear justification and and, and understanding around that but it might be that you question something that hasn't been looked at um, and, and I think 
certainly in nursing, it's it's all it's forever changing, isn't it? And um, I think healthcare is forever changing, um, and and we all play our part in that, don't we? In some way, certainly leadership is is at all levels. I would say an opportunity to to make positive changes happens at all levels. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, very wise words. Very wise words. So we need to stay curious and 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 challenge if we see th something that is different or we're, we're, we're not clear on um, and we're all leaders. Um, so thank you so much. Really enjoyed recording this this afternoon and I hope your listeners enjoy listening to it. Thank you for listening to Combinations this week. This, of course, was the QI Insider Show with Jane Beasley. We'd love to showcase some of the services and what happens inside North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare NHS Trust. And if you want to follow more of the Combinations podcast, you can follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and SoundCloud. And we cover everything from patient stories to interviewing our staff about what's going on or letting our show out to the QI show with Jane Beasley. So thank you so much and we'll see you in another podcast.